Hello History Buffs, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to start out with a big question. What is history? And there's a couple of ways to talk about what it is, to describe it as a field. History is the study of change over time, and it consists of facts plus interpretation. But even with this, how do we classify history? It's solidly in the School of Arts and Sciences, but which one is it? This is a funny thing to try and categorize because it has some qualities of both. On one hand, it's all about the human experience, how we feel, what we've experienced, where we're coming from, how we build society, what does that mean? It's, it serves a lot of the same kind of functions that we see in literature, in plays, in movies. These big questions of who we are, how do we understand ourselves, what kind of factors affect us, how do these same factors affect other people, this all has to do with figuring out who we are, where we're coming from. And like a novel or a play, this is a way to get into someone else's headspace and to discover what kind of factors impact them, where they're coming from. Traditionally speaking, history has had all kinds of different functions. It's been a government record, it's been about our story. However, there was a time in the 60s and 70s where historians wanted to buck that trend and they wanted to be seen as more of a science. Because as much interpretation as we put on the facts, the facts remain the facts. But the idea of history as a science isn't happening in a vacuum. This is happening during the Cold War, which is going to impact the way that STEM versus arts are treated in academia. It's also going to impact the way that history is taught in school. It's a lot more about the facts than it is about the so what. That's why history books to this day focus a lot more on what happened as compared to why it happens. It's why a lot of people get really bored with the way that history is taught so tediously in schools. So that's one big impact we see with trying to standardize history. In addition to this, we're also seeing explosions in technologies. This includes calculators, IBMs, and the ability to crunch mass data into understandable pieces to interpret as history. For the first time, we're able to run multiple regression analyses on big data. We're able to look at census records and see how patterns change over time. We're able to see how people used to eat and how their caloric intake changed over time. And this is a very scientific way of doing history. And what's cool about this is that it opens up the ability to do different kinds of analyses. You see different history in the 60s and 70s because the technology changes. This explosion in mathematics and history is called Cleometrics, or literally history math, named after Cleo, the muse of history. And we're starting to see changes in technology change the way we do history now, the way that we can present history, and of course the way that we can research history. Anybody who's been on Ancestry.com or Newspapers.com knows how easy it is to get access to old materials that used to be available only in archives. However, anybody who's been on Ancestry.com knows that you are a click and a prayer away from being related to Rich and the Liard Heart and Genghis Khan and everybody else of note in history. There are bound to be mistakes, and one big mistake marks the beginning of the end of cleometric analysis as the end-all be-all of history as a science. In the 1970s, Time on the Cross was published. Time on the Cross offers a cleometric analysis of the life and the diet of slaves in the South. They take information from records and ledgers, from plantations, archives, and they run analyses to determine just how much and how diverse a diet are these enslaved people eating and how much are they getting. Based solely on a cleometric analysis, slavery wasn't so bad. Now, this is something that you could get away with writing in the 1950s. I'm looking at you, Stanley Elkins. But as we know from his experience too, things had changed considerably through the 60s and 70s. Considerable history had been done on African American history and the experience of slavery and what it felt like to be a slave and what the true suffering was that it was no longer acceptable to write something saying, well, slavery isn't so bad. So time on the cross was the beginning of the end of Cleometrics as this end all be all kind of analysis in history. We still use it, it's still very useful, but it absolutely cannot be the only metric we use. Or you might end up making a similar analysis that just doesn't encapsulate the whole of the human experience. The cool thing and sometimes the trouble of history is that there are so many ways we can look at our experience. We can look at it geographically or monetarily or by our feelings or, uh, or by mathematics. There are so many ways that we can look 
at our experience that it doesn't make sense to just use one. So these are the basics of Clea metrics. This is how we got started using them, this is what their perceived uses were, the problems with using them, and their place that we still use them in histories today. I hope you enjoyed this video about history math. Leave any thoughts you have in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. And until next time, make history.